It is perverse to begin a story made up of kings and cardinals with me. If a king or a cardinal had done the prologue, he'd have had the right materials. But this, all right, is this a costume? Does this say anything? It barely covers one man's nakedness. Bit of black material that reduces old Adam to the common man. Oh, if they let me come on naked, oh, I'd have shown you something of my own. But for a proposition of my own, I need a costume. Matthew, the household steward to Sir Thomas More. There's company for dinner. All right. Common man. 16th century butler. All right. This. The 16th century was the century of the common man. Like all the other centuries. And that's my proposition. The wine, please, Matthew. And that's Sir Thomas More. It's uh, there, Sir Thomas. Is it good? Bless you, sir. I don't know. Bless you too, Matthew. But every man has his price. No, no, no. Master Richard Rich. Yes, in money too. No, no. Or pleasure. No. Titles, women, bricks and mortar. There's always something. Childish. Well, in suffering, certainly. Buy a man with suffering. No, impose suffering and offer him escape. Ah. Oh. For a moment I thought you were being profound. Not a bit profound. It then becomes a purely practical question of how to make him suffer sufficiently. Mm. And who recommended you to read Signor Machiavelli? Huh? Oh. <laughs> no, no, who? Huh? Uh, Master Cromwell. Oh, he's a very able man. So he is. Yes, I say he is. He's very able. And he said that he will do something for me. I didn't know you knew him. Pardon me, Sir Thomas, but how much do you know about me? Whatever you've let me know. I've let you know everything. Richard, you should go back to Cambridge. You're deteriorating. Well, I'm not used. But do you know how much I have to show for seven months' work? Work? Yes, work. Waiting is work when you wait as I wait. Hard. The Dean of St. Paul's has a post with a house, a servant, and 50 pounds a year. What? What post? Yes. At the new school. A teacher? Oh, a man should go where he won't be tempted, Richard. Yeah. Here, yeah, look. See this, Richard? It's beautiful. Italian silver. Do you want it? What? No joke. Keep it. Or sell it. Why, thank you. Thank you, of course. You'll sell it, won't you? Yes. Yes, I will. And buy what? Some decent clothes. Oh. I want a gown like yours. <laughs> You'll get several gowns for that, I should think. It was sent to me a little while ago by some woman. Now she's put a lawsuit into the code of requests. It's a bribe, Richard. Oh, so you give it away, of course? Yes. To me? Well, I'm not going to keep it, and you need it, of course, if you feel it's contaminated. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll risk it. But, Richard, this is nothing. In office, they offer you all sorts of things. I was once offered a whole village. Yes, with a manor house, heaven knows what else. Why not be a teacher? You'd be a fine teacher, perhaps even a great one. And if I was, who would know it? You, your pupils, your friends, God, not a bad public, that. And a quiet life. You say that? Richard, I was <laughs> commanded into office. It was inflicted on me. Can't you believe that? It's hard. Be a teacher. Come with me. It was magnificent. The Duke of Norfolk, Earl Marshal of England. I tell you, that falcon stooped from the clouds. <laughs> Alice? Here. Lady Alice, my master's wife. I tell you, he stooped. Oh, he didn't. Oh, God damn it, he did. Oh, he couldn't. He does. Not possible. Often. Never. Damn oh, my soul. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Come down, man. Lady Margaret, my master's daughter. Lovely, really lovely. Matthew, get about your business. We settle this, my lord. We'll put it to Thomas. Thomas, no falcon could stoop from a cloud, could it? Oh, I don't know, my dear. It does seem unlikely. Oh, no, I have seen falcons do some very splendid things. Oh, but how could he stoop from a cloud? Oh, he couldn't see where he was going. Oh, see, Alice, you're ignorant of the subject. A real falcon don't care where he's going. In any case, I'm talking to Meg. 
It was the very first cast of the dame. Some was behind us, and from side to side of the valley, like the like a roof of a tent, was solid mist. Ah, mist. Well, mist is cloud, isn't it? No. The the opinion of Aristotle is that mist is an exhalation of the earth, whereas he clouds. He stood five hundred feet, <laughs> like that, like an act of God, isn't he, Thomas? He's tremendous. Mm, tremendous. Did he kill the heron? No, oh, the heron was clever. <laughs> It is a royal stoop, though. And, and if you could ride, Alice, I'd show you. I can ride, my lord. Alice. Oh, and I'll bet 20 fa... No, 30 shilling. I see no falcon stoop from no cloud. Oh, done, done. Alice, you can't ride with them. God's pretty old Thomas. Remember who you are. I'm no city wife. No, you've just lost yourself 30 shillings, I should think. There are such birds. Mm. What was that of Aristotle's, Richard? Oh, nothing, Sir Thomas. It was out of place. I never found much... Use in Aristotle, almost so, not practically. Oh, great philosopher, of course, wonderful mind. Exactly, Your Grace. Hmm? Our Master Rich is newly converted to the doctrines of Machiavelli. Oh, no. Uh, the Italian. Uh, nasty book, from what I hear. Very practical, Your Grace. You read it? <laughs> Amazing girl, Thomas. The doctrines of Machiavelli have been largely misunderstood, I think. Properly apprehended, he has no doctrine. But uh, Master Cromwell has the sense of it, I believe. You know Cromwell? Slightly, Your Grace. The Cardinal's new secretary. That one? Wow. That's a fact. Where? Two, three days. Ah, uh, I'll be up quick and down quick with Master Cromwell. Did you uh, know this? No. You like Master Cromwell, Master Rich? <laughs> He'll be the only man in London if he does. <laughs> I think I do, Lady Alice. Oh, good. Well, you don't need my help, then. Sir Thomas, if only you knew how much, much rather I'd have yours than his. <laughs> Speak of the Cardinal's secretary, the Cardinal appears. He wants me. Now... For this time of night. The King's business. And Bullen's business. More than likely, Alice. More than likely. What's the time? Eleven o'clock, sir. Is there a boat? Waiting, sir. Well, if your grace will excuse me, Richard. Uh, no. You'll go to bed. And you go to bed. Dear Lord, give us rest, rest this rest night, or we must be wakeful, wakeful cheerful, cheerful, careful, careful only, only for our soul's salvation, salvation, for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. And bless our Lord the King. And bless, and bless our, our Lord, Lord the King. The King. Amen. 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 Howard, are you at Richmond? Oh, no, no, uh, down the river. Well, uh, good night, then. Oh, here's a young man desperate for employment, something in the clerical line. Hmm, you recommend him? I don't recommend him. I point him out. He's at the new inn. Can you take him there? Mm. All right. Yeah, come on. Oh, my lord, oh, I'm so glad. Hounslow, Alice. Wherever you like. Alice, the ground's hard at Hounslow. <laughs> Aye, that's where the cardinal crushed his bum. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. Sir Thomas, thank you. Be a teacher. Margaret. Yes? Go to bed. Hey, what? Oh, oh, it's a gift, Matthew. Sir Thomas gave it to me. He gave it to me? Very nice present, sir. Yes. Well, good night, Matthew. Uh, sir Thomas is very fond of you, sir. Oh? Uh, here you are, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, sir. That one will come to nothing. My master, Sir Thomas More, would give anything to anyone. Some say that's good, some say that's bad. I say he can't help it, and that's bad, because someday someone will ask him for something he wants to keep, and he'll be out of practice. Must be something he wants to keep, it's only common sense.
Thank you, Chamberlain. Half past one, where have you been? One o'clock, Your Grace. I've been on the river. Since you seem so violently opposed to this dispatch for Rome, I thought you'd like to look it over. Thank you, Your Grace. Before it goes. Your Grace is very kind. Thank you. Well, what do you think of it? It seems very well phrased, Your Grace. <laughs> the devil it does. And apart from the style, Sir Thomas? I still think the Council should be told before this goes to Italy. Would you tell them? Yes, I believe you would. You're a constant regret to me, Thomas. You would only look facts flat on without that horrible moral squint. With just a little common sense, you could be a statesman. Your grace flatters me. Don't fribble. Are you going to help me? If your grace will be specific. Oh, you're a plodder. Take you all together, Thomas, your scholarship, your experience. What are you? Spare me your discretion. He's been out playing in the mud again with the bullion wench. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Are you going to oppose me? Oh, he's gone in. All right, we'll plod. The king wants a son. What are you going to do about it? I'm very sure the king needs no advice from me on what to do about it. Oh, sit down. Do you favor a change of dynasty, Thomas? Do you think two Tudors are sufficient? For God's sake, your grace. Then the king needs a son. I repeat, what are you going to do about it? I pray for it daily. God's death, he means it. That thing out there is at least fertile, Thomas. But she's not his wife. No, Catherine's his wife, and she's as barren as a brick. Are you going to pray for a miracle? There are precedents. Yes, all right, good. Pray. Pray by all means. But in addition to prayer, there is effort. My effort is to secure a divorce. Have I your support or have I not? A dispensation was granted so that the king might marry Queen Catherine. Now we are to ask the Pope to dispense with his dispensation? I don't like plodding, Thomas. Clearly, all we have to do is approach His Holiness and ask him. I think we might perhaps influence his answer. Like this? Like that, and in other ways. <sighs> I've already expressed my opinion of this. Then good night. Oh, your conscience is your own affair, Thomas. But you're a statesman. Do you remember the Yorkist wars? Very clearly. Let him die without an heir, and we'll have them back again. Let him die without an heir, and this peace you think so much of will go out like that. Very well, then. England needs an heir. Certain measures, perhaps regrettable, perhaps not. There are many things in the church that need reformation, Thomas. All right, regrettable, but necessary to get us an heir. Now explain how you, as Councillor of England, can obstruct those measures for the sake of your own private conscience. Well, I believe when a statesman forsakes his own private conscience for the sake of his public duty, he leads his country by a short route to chaos. 
Then we shall have my prayers to fall back on. You'd like that, wouldn't you? To govern the country by prayer. Yes, I would. I'd like to be here to see you try it. Who will? Who will put his neck in this? After me. You, Fisher, Suffolk. Fisher for me. Aye, but for the king. How about my secretary, Master Cromwell? Cromwell? You'd rather do it yourself. Me rather than Cromwell? Then come down to earth, Thomas. But until you do, bear in mind you have an enemy. Where, Your Grace? Here, Thomas. As Your Grace pleases. As God wills. Perhaps, Your Grace. Thomas More, you should have been a cleric. Like yourself, Your Grace. Uh, Sir Thomas More. Senor Chapuis, you're up very late, Your Excellency. Uh, so is the Cardinal, Sir Thomas. He sleeps very little. You have just left him, I think. You are correctly informed, as always. <laughs> I will not ask you the subject of your conversation. No, of course not. Mr. Thomas, I will be plain with you. Well, plain so far as diplomacy permits. My master, Charles, King of Spain, feels himself concerned about his father's sister, Queen Catherine, King Henry's lawful wife. Now, should she be insulted, the King of Spain would feel himself insulted. His feeling would be natural. Sir Thomas, may I ask if you and the Cardinal parted, um, well, how shall I say, amicably? Amicably, yes. What, in agreement? Amicably. Ah, say no more, Sir Thomas. I understand. I hope you do, Your Excellency. You are a good man. I don't see how you deduce that from what I've just told you. I understand. You are a good man. Dominus Fabisco. Spiritu tuo. Boatman? Boatman? Boatman, please. Uh, boat here, sir. Boatman? Uh, yes, sir. Boatman. Take me home. I was just going home myself, sir. And find me another boat. Yes, sir, that's all right. I expect you'll uh, make it worth my while. Boatman? Have you a license? Bless you, sir. Yes, I've got a license. Then you know the fares are fixed. Oh, why, it's Sir Thomas. Good evening, Master Cromwell. You uh, work very late. I'm on my way to the Cardinal. Uh, you've just left him, I think. Yes, I have. You left him in his laughing mood, I hope. On the whole, I would say not. No, not laughing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm one of your multitudinous admirers, Sir Thomas. Penny halfpenny to Chelsea, Boatman. The uh, coming man, they say, sir. Do they? People like that think the boats stay afloat on their own, sir. But they don't. They cost money. Take anchor rope. You may not believe me, for a little skiff like mine is a penny a fathom. And what with a young wife, as I'll you know, sir. pay you what I always pay you. How is your wife? Losing her shape, sir. Losing it fast. So are we all? Oh, yes. Common. Take me home. That I will, sir. From Richmond to Chelsea, Penny Apney. From Chelsea to Richmond, Penny Apney. From Richmond to Chelsea, it's an easy float downstream. And from Chelsea to Richmond, it's a hard pull upstream. And it's a Penny Apney either way. Whoever makes the regulations doesn't row a boat.
Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, sir. Lady Alice in bed. Yes, sir. Lady Margaret. Master Ropers here, sir. At this hour? Let him in. He's a hard man to keep out, sir. Uh, where are they? Here, Father. Thank you, Matthew. Good morning, William. You're a little early for breakfast. I haven't come for breakfast, sir. Oh. Will wants to marry me, Father. Well, he can't marry you. Sir Thomas, I'm to be called to the bar. Oh, congratulations, Robert. My family may not be at the palace, sir, but in the city... Oh, there's nothing wrong with your family. There's nothing wrong with your fortune. There's nothing wrong with you, except you need a clock. I can buy a clock, sir. Oh, Robert, the answer is no, and it will be no, so long as you're a heretic. That's a... That's a word I don't like, Sir Thomas. Not a likable word. It's not a likable thing. The church is heretical. Dr. Luther's proved that to my satisfaction. There is an excommunicate. From a heretic church. Church? Huh. It's a shop. Forgiveness by the florin. Job lots now in Germany. Uh, and divorces. Divorces. Oh, half England's buzzing with that. <laughs> half England. The inns of court may be buzzing. England doesn't buzz so easily. It will. And is that a church? Is that a cardinal? Is that a pope or antichrist? Will! Look! What I know, I'll say. You have no sense of the place. You have no sense of the time. I have... Roper, two years ago you were a passionate churchman. Now you're a passionate Lutheran. We must just pray when your head's finished turning, your face will be to the front again. Don't lengthen your prayers with me, sir. Oh, one more or less. Is your horse here? No, I walked. Well, take a horse from the stables and get back home. Go along now. May I come again? Oh, oh yes. Soon. Good night, sir. Good morning, Will. Oh, is that final, Father? So long as he's a heretic, Meg, that is absolute. Oh, he's a nice boy. Terribly strong principles, though. I thought I told you to go to bed. Yes. Why? Because I intended you to go to bed. Oh, you're very pensive. You're very gay. Did the Cardinal talk about the divorce? You know, I think we've been on the wrong track with Will. It's no good arguing with Roper. Father, did he? Old Roper was just the same. I'll let him think he's going with the current. He'll turn right round and start swimming in the opposite direction. What we need is a really substantial attack in the church. We're going to get it, aren't we? I won't have you talk treason, Meg. I won't have you repeat lawyer's gossip either. I'm a lawyer myself. I know what it's worth. Thomas! Now look what you've done. I've just seen that young roper on my horse! Never mind, dear. He'll bring it back. He's been to see Margaret. Oh, why don't you beat that girl? No, no, she's full of education. It's a delicate commodity. Hmm, the more's a pity. Yes, but it's in there now. And think what it cost. <laughs> Ah, uh, Margaret, get some hot water. Oh, I'm sorry you were waking chick. Thomas, what did Wolsey want? Young Roper asked me for Margaret. <gasps> oh, what impudence! Yes, wasn't it? Ooh. Oh, you old fox. <laughs> what did Wolsey want, Thomas? He wanted me to read a dispatch. Is that all? A Latin dispatch. Oh, so you don't want to talk about it? No. Norfolk was talking of you for Chancellor. Well, he's a dangerous friend, then. Wolsey's Chancellor, God help him, we don't need another. I don't need this. Oh, you drink it. Great men get colds in the head just the same as commoners. That's dangerous leveling talk, Alice. Beware of the tower. You drink it. I will, I will. I'll drink it in bed. Would you want to be Chancellor? No. That's what I said. But Norfolk said if Wolsey fell, the if king... If Wolsey fell, the splash would swamp a few small boats like ours. There will be no new Chancellors while Wolsey lives. Whether we follow tradition in ascribing Wolsey's death to a broken heart, or accept a less feeling diagnosis of pulmonary pneumonia, its effective cause was the king's displeasure. He died at Leicester on the 29th of November, 1530, while on his way to the tower under charge of high treason. England's next Lord Chancellor was Sir Thomas More, a scholar and, by popular repute, a saint. His scholarship is supported by his writings, 
Saintliness is a quality less easy to establish, but from his willful indifference to realities, which were obvious to quite ordinary contemporaries, it seems all too probable that he had it. To Hampton. I uh, came with the Duke of Norfolk last night, Master Cromwell. Uh, they're hunting again. Oh, it's a kingly pastime, Master Rich. I'm glad you found employment. You're the, uh, the Duke's secretary, are you not? My work is mostly secretarial, yes. Or is it his librarian you are? Well, I do look after His Grace's library, yes. Oh, well, that's something. I don't suppose you're bothered much by His Grace in the library. Hmm? You know, it's odd how differently men's fortunes flow. My late master, the cardinal, died in disgrace, and here I am in the king's own service, and there you are in a comparative backwater. And yet the new Lord Chancellor is an old friend of yours. He isn't really my friend. Oh, I thought he was. Uh, in a sense, he is. I always understood he set you up in life. He recommended me to the Duke. Are you... Are you very attached to His Grace's library, or are you free to accept an office? Have you offices in gift? I am listened to by those that have. Master Cromwell, what is it that you do for the King? <laughs> yes, I should like to know that, Master Cromwell. Ah, Senor Chapuis, you know His Excellency Rich, the Spanish ambassador, uh, the uh, Duke of Norfolk's librarian. But how should we introduce you, uh, Master Cromwell? If we had the happiness. Oh, sly. Do you notice how sly he is, Rich? Well, I suppose you would call me the king's ear. It's a useful organ, the ear. Uh, but in fact, it's even simpler than that. When the king wants something done, I do it. For example, Master Cromwell. Well, now, for example, next week at Deptford, we are launching the Great Harry. 1,000 tons, four masts, 66 guns, an overall length of 175 feet. It's expected to be very effective. All this you probably know. However, you probably do not know that the king himself will guide her down the river. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, yes, the king himself will be her pilot. He will have assistance, of course, but he himself will be her pilot. He will have a pilot's whistle upon which he will blow, and he will wear in every respect a common pilot's uniform except for the material, which will be cloth of gold. <laughs> These innocent fancies require more preparation than you might suppose, and someone has to do it. Mm. Meantime, I do prepare myself for higher things. I stock my mind. <laughs> Alas, Master Cromwell, don't we all? That ship, for instance. It has 56 guns, by the way, not 66, and only 40 of them are heavy. I understand that uh, after the launching, the king will take his barge down to Chelsea. Yes, yes. To Sir Thomas More's, yes. Will you be there? Oh, no. They'll talk about the divorce. The king will ask him for an answer. He has given his answer. The king will ask him for another. Sir Thomas is a good son of the church. Sir Thomas is a man. Oh, isn't that his steward? Yes, yes, I believe so. Well, good day, Your Excellency. Ah, good day, Master Cromwell. Good day. Sir, mm. Sir Thomas doesn't talk about it. He doesn't talk about it to his wife. This is worth nothing. But he doesn't talk about it to Lady Margaret. That's his daughter, sir. So? So he's worried, sir. He's frightened. He goes white when it's mentioned. All right. Oh, sir. Are you coming in my direction, Rich? <laughs> 
Oh, no, 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 no. No, I think you should, you know. I can't tell you anything. Well, Sir Thomas rises at six and prays for an hour and a half, sir. Yes. During Lent, he lived entirely on bread and water, sir. Yes, well, Sir Thomas is a true son of the church. That he is, sir. What did Master Cromwell want? Uh, the same as you, sir. Now, no man can serve two masters, Stuart. Indeed, no, sir. I serve one. Good, simple thought here. Take this. And our Lord watch you. You too, sir. That is a very religious man. Psst, Matthew. Want to see him, shall we? I've no idea, sir. What did you tell him? That Sir Thomas says his prayers and goes to confession, sir. Why that? That's what he wanted to hear, sir. Oh, I could have told him any number of things about Sir Thomas. That he has rheumatism, prefers red wine to white, is easily seasick, afraid of drowning, but that's what he wanted to hear. Well, what did he say? He said Sir Thomas was a good churchman, sir. Well, that's true, isn't it? I'm only telling you what he said, sir. Uh, Master Cromwell went that way, sir. Can I ask you which way Master Cromwell went? The great thing is not to get out of your depth. What I can tell them is common knowledge. But now they've paid money for it. And everyone wants value for his money. They'll make it a secret to prove they've not been built. They'll make a secret of it by making it dangerous. <laughs> oh, and I can't touch the bottom. I'll go deaf, blind and dumb. And that's more than I can earn in a fortnight. And the Chancellor is not here. Sir, mm -hmm. my lady, it's not my fault. Oh. The chapel. The chapel. Oh, God's blood. <laughs> <laughs> Things too far, Alice. Do I not know it? It will end badly for him. I know that too. This is not how Wolsey made himself break. Oh, 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 Lord Chatham, oh, oh, what oh, sort oh, of fooling is this? Does the king visit you every day? No, but I go to Vespers almost every day. He's here! But isn't this visit meant to be a surprise? Yes. Well, for you, yes. It's not for him. Oh, my Lord Chancellor, you propose to meet the king dressed as a parish clerk? Parish clerk, my Lord Chancellor. You dishonor the king and his office. The service of God is not a dishonor to any office. Believe me, my friend, I do not belittle the honor His Majesty's doing me. Here, give him the chain. For God's sake, no, give him the no, chain. No. Enough's enough! Haven't you done? Your Majesty does my house more honor than I fear my household can bear. No ceremony, Thomas, no ceremony, a passing fancy. I happen to be on the river. Look. Mud. <laughs> we do that in better style, Your Grace, when we come by the road. Ah, the road. There's the road for me, Thomas. The river. My river. By heaven, what an evening, Lady Alice. I fear we called upon you unexpectedly. Oh, no, Your Grace. Oh, that, that is, uh, yes, but, but we are ready. Ready to entertain you, that is, Your Grace. This is my daughter, Margaret, sire. She has not yet had the honor to meet Your Grace. Why, Margaret? They told me you were a scholar. Answer, Margaret. Among women, I pass for one, Your Grace. Antiquone modo latine loqueris an oxoniensi. Quame docuit parta, domine. Bene, optimus est. Grancamne linguam quoque te docuit. Grancamne docuit non parta mea, sed me patris amicus. Johannes Collatus, sancti pauli decanus. O in literis graecis tamen non minusquam latinis. 
As magistry minuita de scipuli still titia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Take care, Thomas. There is no end to the making of books, and too much reading is a weariness of the flesh. Can you dance, too? Not well, Your Grace. Well, I dance superlatively. That, Margaret, is a dancer's leg. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Norfolk. Yeah. Now that is a restless leg, but I can still throw it. Shall I show them how? No. <laughs> Shall I? No, no, Grace. You are gentle. That's good. You shall read to me. No, no. You shall read to me. <sighs> Lady Alice, the river has given me an appetite. Oh, if your Grace would share a very simple supper. It would please me to. I'm something of a scholar, too, did you know? Well, the world knows your Grace's book, asserting the seven sacraments of the church. Ah, uh, yes, between ourselves, your father had a hand in that, eh, Thomas? Here and there, your Grace, in a minor capacity. He seeks to shame me with his modesty. On second thoughts, Lady Alice, we will follow. Thomas and I will follow. Wait! Margaret, are you fond of music? Yes, Your Grace. Blow. Blow. <whistles> Louder. <laughs> I brought them with me. <laughs> Lady Alice, take them in. Thomas. Listen to this, Thomas. You know it? No, Grace. I launched a ship today, Thomas. You had many accomplishments, you... It was a great experience. A great experience, Thomas. Yes, Your Grace. <laughs> I am a fool. Oh, so you What Chris. else but a fool? To live in a court with a licentious mob. When I have friends with gardens. Your Grace. No courtship, no ceremony. Be seated, Thomas. Grace. You are my friend, are you not? Your Majesty. And thank God I have a friend for my Chancellor. Readier to be friends, I trust, than he was to be Chancellor. <laughs> my own knowledge of my poor abilities. I will judge your abilities, Thomas. Did you know Wolsey named you for Chancellor? Wolsey? Aye, before he died. Wolsey named you, and Wolsey was no fool. He was a statesman of incomparable abilities, Your Grace. Then why did he fail me? Villainy. I was right to break him, Thomas. He was all pride. A proud man, Thomas, and he failed me! He failed me, Thomas, and the one thing that matters, the one thing that matters, Thomas, then or now, and why? Because he wanted to be Pope. Oh, yes. He wanted to be Bishop of Rome. I will tell you something, Thomas, and you can check this for yourself. It was never merry in England while there were cardinals amongst us. Remember that, Thomas. Touching this matter of my divorce, have you thought about it since we last talked? Little else. Then you see your way clear to me. That you should put away Queen Catherine, sire. Alas, as I think of it, I see so clearly that I cannot come with your grace that my endeavors be not to think of it at all. Then you have not thought enough. Great God, Thomas! Why do you hold out against me in the desire of my heart, the very wick of my heart? Here is my right arm, sire. Take your dagger there and saw it from my shoulder, and I will laugh and be thankful if by that means I can come with your grace with a clear conscience. I know it, Thomas. 
By now! I crave pardon if I offend. Speak, then. When I took the great seal, your majesty promised not to pursue me in this matter. Ah, so I break my word, Master Moore! No, no, I'm joking. I joke roughly. I often think I'm a rough fellow. Yes, a rough young fellow. Be seated. Ah, that's a rose bay. We have one just like it at Hampton. Beautiful. You must consider, Thomas, I stand in peril of my soul. It was no marriage, she was my brother's wife. Leviticus, thou shall not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. Yes, Your Grace, but Deuteronomy... Deuteronomy is ambiguous. I'm not fit to meddle in these matters, sire. To me, it seems a question for the Holy See. Thomas, does a man need a pope to tell him when he has sinned? It was a sin, I admit it, I repent. And God has punished me, I have no son. Son after son, she's borne me, all dead at birth or dead within the month. I never saw the hand of God so clear in anything. Oh, I... I have a daughter. She's a, a good child. A well-set child. But I have no son! It is my bounden duty to put away the Queen! And all the popes, back to St. Peter, shall not come between me and my duty. How is it you cannot see everyone else does? Then why does your grace need my poor support? Because you are honest. And what's more to the purpose, you are known to be honest. There are those like Norfolk that follow me because I wear the crown. There are those like Master Cromwell that follow me because they are jackals with sharp teeth and I am their lion. There is a mass that follows me because it follows anything that moves. And there is you. I am sick to think how much I must displease your grace. No, Thomas. I respect your sincerity. <laughs> respect? Oh, man, it's water in the desert. But come. How did you like our music? That air they played, it had a certain... Well, you tell me what you thought. Could it have been your grace's own? Discovered. Now I'll never know your true opinion, and that is irksome, Thomas. And I will tell your grace truly what I thought of it. Speak, then. To me, it seemed delightful. Thomas, I chose the right man for Chancellor. I must, in fairness, add my taste in music is reputedly deplorable. Your taste in music is excellent and exactly coincides with my own. <laughs> oh, music. Send them back without me, Thomas. I will stay here in Chelsea and make music. My house is at your grace's disposal. Touching this other business, mark you, Thomas, I will have no opposition. Your Grace? No opposition, I say. No opposition. Your conscience is your own affair, but you are my Chancellor. There. You have my word. I will leave you out of it, but I do not take it kindly, Thomas, and I will have no opposition. Oh, I see how it will be. The bishops will oppose me, the full-fared hypocritical princes of the Church, and as for the Pope, they're all hypocrites. Mind they don't take you in, Thomas. Lie low if you will, but I will brook no opposition. No signs, no letters, no pamphlets. Mark that, Thomas. No writings against me. Your Grace is unjust. I am Your Grace's loyal minister. If I cannot serve Your Grace in this great matter of the Queen... I have no Queen! Catherine is not my wife, and no priest can make her so. And they that say that she is my wife are not only liars, but traitors. Mind it, Thomas. Am I a babbler, Your Grace? You are stubborn. Thomas, if you could come with me, there is no man I would soonest raise. Yes, with my own hand. Your Majesty overwhelms me. that. Eight o'clock. Oh, lift yourself up, man. Lift yourself up. Have I not promised? Shall we eat? Your grace pleases. Eight o'clock, you said, Thomas. I was forgetting the tide. The tide will be changing, Thomas. I'd better go. Your grace.
Grace, I'm I sorry. I must catch the tide, Thomas, or I won't get back to Richmond till... Now, don't come. Tell Norfolk. Ah, Lady Alice, I must go. I want to catch the tide. To tell you the truth, Lady Alice, I quite forgot in your haven here how time flows past outside. Affairs call me to court, so I give you my thanks and say good night! Good night, Your Grace. Good night, Your Grace. What's this? You crossed him? Why? I couldn't find the other way. You're too nice altogether, Thomas. Woman, mind your house! I am minding my house! you have me do? Be ruled. If you won't rule him, be ruled. I neither would nor could rule my king. There's a little, little space where I must rule myself. It's very little less to him than a tennis court. Look, it was eight o'clock at eight o'clock, Lady Anne likes to dart. Thomas, stay friends with him. And whatever can be done by smiling, you may rely on me to do. You don't know how to flatter. I flatter very well. A recipe is beginning to be widely copied. It's the basic syrup with just a sousson of discreet impudence. I wish he'd eaten here. <laughs> so do I. We shall be living in that simple supper of yours for a fortnight. Alice. Alice. Set your mind at rest. This is not the stuff of which martyrs are made. Sir Thomas. Oh, oh Wilbur, oh, oh, what do you want? It's here? not convenient. Oh, must everything be made convenient? I'm not a convenient man, Meg. I've got an inconvenient conscience. How long have you been here? Are you in the King's party? No, sir, I'm not in the King's party. It's of that I wish to speak to you. My spirit is perturbed. Oh. Oh. Is it, Will? Why? I've been offered a seat in the next Parliament. Ought I to take it? Well, that depends. Given your views on church reform, I should think you could do yourself a lot of good in the next parliament. My views on the church? I must confess, since last we met, my views have somewhat modified. I modify nothing concerning the body of the church. The money changes in the temple must be scourged. But an attack on the church herself, no. I see behind that an attack on God. Oh, Roper. The devil's work. Roper. To be done by the devil's ministers. Oh, oh for what? heaven's sakes, will you remember my office? Oh, if you stand on your office... I don't stand on it. There are certain things I may not hear. Sophistication. It's what I was told. The court has corrupted you, Sir Thomas. You've learned to study your convenience. What? You've learned to flatter. There, Alice, you see, I have a reputation for it. Good body. Young man, if I were the Chancellor, I'd have you whipped. Master Rich is here, Sir Thomas. Richard. Good evening, sir. Lady Alice. Lady Margaret. Good evening, Master Ridge. You know uh, William Roper, the younger? Oh, by reputation, of course. Good evening, Master Ridge. Huh? Oh. You've heard of me? Yes. What connection? I don't know what you can have heard. I sense that I am not welcome here. Why, Richard, have you done something that's should make you not welcome. Why? Do you suspect me of it? I shall begin to. Cromwell is asking questions about you. About you particularly. He's continually collecting information about you. Yes, I know that. And that's one of his sources. Of course. It's one of my servants. Thank you, Matthew. Signor Chapuis, the, the Spanish ambassador. Collects but... information too. That's one of his functions. You look at me as though I were an enemy. Why, Richard, you. You're shaky. I'm adrift. Help me. How? Employ me. No. Employ me! No. I 
I would be steadfast. Richard. You couldn't answer for yourself even so far as tonight. Huh? Arrest him. Yes. For what? He's dangerous. For libel. He's a spy. Yes, arrest him. Father, that man's bad. Well, there's no law against that. There is. God's law. Yeah, then God can arrest him. Sophistication upon sophistication. No, sheer simplicity. The law, Roper, the law. I know what's legal, not what's right, and I'll stick to what's legal. Then you set man's law above God's. No, far below. But let me draw your attention to a fact. I am not God. But the currents and eddies of right and wrong, would you find such plain sailing? I can't navigate. I'm no voyager. But in the thickets of the law, oh, there, I'm a forester. I doubt there's a man alive can follow me there. Thank God. While you talk, he's gone. And go he sure to be with the devil himself until he broke the law. So now you'd give the devil benefit of law? Yes. What would you do? Cut a great road through the law to get after the devil? I'd cut down every law in England to do that. Ah. And when the last law was down and the devil turned round on you, where would you hide, Roper? The laws are all being flat. This country's planted thick with laws. From coast to coast, man's laws, not God's. And if you cut them down and you're just the man to do it, do you really think you could stand upright in the winds that would blow then? Yes, I'd give the devil benefit of law for my own safety's sake. I've long suspected this. This is the golden calf. The law's your god. <laughs> Rupi, you are a fool. God's my god, but I find him rather too subtle. I don't know where he is, nor what he wants. My god wants service, to the end and unremitting, nothing else. You sure that's god? Sounds like Moloch. Uh, it may be God, but whoever hunts for me, God or devil, will find me hiding in the thickets of the law. And I'll hide my daughter with me, too. Not hoist her up the mainmast of your seagoing principles. They put about too nimbly. Oh, that was harsh. What's happened here? You can't abide the fool, that's all. Be off. Hide you? Hide you from what? He said nothing about hiding me, you notice. I'm too fat to hide, I suppose. Oh, you know he meant us both. But from what? I don't know. I don't know if he knows. He's not said one simple direct word to me since this divorce came up. It's not God that's gone subtle, it's him. Roper, that was harsh. Your principles are excellent. Very best quality. You're not truly your principles are fine. Oh, look, we must make a start in all that food. Oh, Father. Can't you be plain with us? I stand on the wrong side of no statute, no common law. I have not disobeyed my sovereign. I truly believe no man in England is safer than myself. I want my supper. God. We shall need your assistance, Well, There's an excellent burgundy, if your principles permit. They don't, sir. We'll put some water in it. Just the water, sir. My poor boy. Why does Cromwell collect information about you? I'm a prominent figure. Somewhere someone's collecting information about Cromwell. Now, no more shirking. We must make a start. This is stuffed swan, if you please. The loyal subject, a pub. Um, publican. <laughs> well, he's a deep one, that's Sir Thomas More. Deep. Takes a lot of education to get a man as deep as that. And a deep nature to begin with. The likes of me can hardly be expected to follow the processes of a man like that. Can we? Right, ready. Ready, sir. Is this a good place for a conspiracy, innkeeper? You asked for a private room, sir. I want somewhere without too many little dark corners. I don't understand you, sir. There's only four corners, as you see, and then barrels. You don't understand me. That's right, sir. Do you know who I am? No, sir. Now, don't be too tactful, innkeeper. I don't understand, sir. When the likes of you are too tactful, the likes of me begin to wonder who's the fool. I just don't understand, sir. Mm. The master statesman of us all. I don't understand. All right. Get out. Rich. 
Yes, it may be I am a little intoxicated. But not just with alcohol, with success. Who has a strong head for success, eh? None of us gets enough of it, except kings, and they're born drunk. Success? What success? Yes. Collector of revenues for York. Oh, you do keep your ears close to the ground, don't you? Now. What then? Sir Thomas Paget is retiring. Secretary to the council. Yes, it is astonishing, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, one sees that it's logical. No ceremony, no court should be seated. As His Majesty would say. No, no. Do you see how I trust you? I'd never repeat or report anything like that. Oh? What kind of thing would you repeat or report? Well, nothing said in friendship. May I say friendship? Oh, yes, yes, if you like. But do you really mean that, that you would never repeat or report anything? Yes. No, but seriously. Why, yes. Rich. Seriously. Well, it would depend what I was offered. But now, don't just say it to please me. It's true. It would depend what I was offered. Everyone knows it, but not many people can say it. There are some things one wouldn't do for anything, surely. Well, that idea is like those lifelines you see on the embankment, comforting, but you don't expect to have to use them. Well, congratulations. On what? I think you'd make a good collector of revenues for your diocese. Is it in your gift? Mm -hmm. Will be. What do I have to do for it? Nothing. It's not like that, Rich. There are no rules with rewards and penalties. So much wickedness purchases, so much worldly prospering. Are you sure you're not religious? Almost sure. Right. Get sure. No, not like that. It's, uh, it's much more a matter of convenience. Administrative convenience. Now, normally, when a man wants to change his woman, you let him if it's convenient and you prevent him if it's not. But the constant factor is this element of convenience. Whose convenience? Oh, ours. Um, but everybody's too. <laughs> However, in the present circumstances, the man who wants to change his woman is our sovereign lord, King Harry, by grace of God, the eighth of that name. Which is a quaint way of saying, if he wants to change his woman, he will. So that becomes the constant factor. And it's our job as administrators to make it as convenient as we can. I say our job on the assumption that you'll take this post at York I've offered you. Yes, yes, yes. It's a bad sign when people are depressed by their own good fortune. I'm not depressed. Mm. You look depressed. Oh, I'm lamenting. I've lost my innocence. Well, you lost that some time ago. If you've only just noticed it, it can't have been very important to you. <laughs> Why, that's true. <laughs> I can't. We experience a sense of release, do we, Master Rich? An unfamiliar freshness in the head, as of open air. Collector of revenues isn't bad. Yeah, not bad for a start. Now, our present Lord Chancellor. Oh, there's an innocent man. The odd thing is, he is. Oh, yes, I say he is. The trouble is, his innocence is tangled in this proposition, that you can't change a woman without a divorce, and you can't get a divorce unless the Pope says so. And from this quite meaningless circumstance, I fear some degree of... Administrative inconvenience? Just so. <laughs> that goblet he gave you, how much was it worth? Come along, Rich. He gave you a silver goblet. How much did you get for it? Fifty shillings. Could you take me to the shop? Yes. Where did he get it? It was a present from a woman, a litigant, wasn't it? Yes. Which court? Chancery? No, 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 don't get drunk. In which court was the litigant's case? The court of requests. <sighs> There now. 
That wasn't too painful, was it? No. That's all there is. And it'll be easier next time. What use are they, these bits of information that you collect? Oh, none at all, usually. But sometimes? Well, there are these men. You know, upright, steadfast men who want themselves to be the constant factor in the situation, which, of course, they can't be. The situation rolls forward in any case. So what happens? Well, if they've got any sense, they get out of the way. What if they haven't got any sense? Well, none at all. Oh, why? Then they're only fit for heaven. But Sir Thomas has plenty of sense. He could be frightened. Don't forget that he's an innocent, Master Cromwell. Yes, well, I think we'll finish there for tonight. After all, he is the Lord Chancellor. You wouldn't find him easy to frighten. You've mistaken your man this time. He doesn't know how to be frightened. He doesn't know how to be frightened. Why, then, he never put his hand in the candle, did he? You enjoyed that? You enjoyed it? The first act ended early in the year 1530, and it's now the middle of May, 1532. Two years. Thank you. During that time, a lot of water flowed under the bridge, and one of the things that's floated along on it is the Church of England, that finest flower of our island genius for compromise. That system, peculiar to these shores, which deflects the torrents of religious passion down the canals of moderation. That's very well put. Typically, this great effect was achieved not by bloodshed, but by act of Parliament. Only an unhappy few were found to set themselves against the current of their times, and in so doing, to court disaster. For we're dealing with an age less fastidious than our own. Imprisonment without trial, and even examination under torture, were common practice. Close, Will? Yes, I must. Why? The time has come for decent men to declare their allegiance. What allegiance are those designed to express? My allegiance to the church. Well, you look like a Spaniard. All credit to Spain, then. Oh, you wouldn't last six months in Spain. You'd have been burnt alive in Spain during your heretic periods. I suppose you have the right to remind me of it. That chain of office that you wear is a degradation. It's no degradation. Great men have worn this. I've told you before, if the English bishops submit to the king today, I'll take it off. What do you expect to hear from them? About now, I was promised an immediate message. I don't see what difference the bishops can make. The church is already a wing of the palace, is it not? The, the king is already its supreme head, is he not? No. You're denying the act of supremacy. No, I'm not. The act states that the king is... The supreme is head of the church in England. So far as the law of God allows. How far the law of God does allow it remains a matter of opinion, since the act doesn't state it. A legal quibble. Call it what you like. It's there, thank God. 
Very well. In your opinion, how far does the law of God allow this? I'll keep my opinion to myself, Will. Yes, I'll tell you mine. Don't. If it's what I think it is, it's high treason, Roper. Will you remember you've a wife now and may have children? Why must he remember that? To keep myself discreet. Oh, then I'd rather you forgot it. You're both idiots. Our children. Oh, saints. Oh, Father, Senor Chapuis has come to see you. Your Excellency. Oh, saints, my lord. Ah, oh, that's it, of course. Saints. Turn your head a bit, Roper. Yes, I think I do detect a faint radiance. Will, you should have told us. <laughs> oh, come, come, my lord. You too, at this time, are not free from some suspicion of saintliness. I don't like the sound of that, Your Excellency. What do you require of me? Well, may not I come simply to pay my respects to the English Socrates? I've no taste for hemlock, if that's what you mean. God forbid! But must I require anything? After all, we are brothers in Christ, you and I. Along with the rest of humanity. You uh, live in Cheapside, Signor. Well, to reach a brother in Christ, you've only to open a window and empty your chamber pot. There was no need to come all the way to Chelsea. <laughs> William, the uh, Spanish ambassador is here on business. Would you mind? Ah, oh, no. I protest. Dominus Vobiscum, Philime. Et cum spiritu tuo, Excellencies. My lord, I cannot believe that you will allow yourself to be associated with the recent actions of King Henry in respect of Queen Catherine. Subjects are associated with the actions of kings willy-nilly. Oh, Lord Chancellor, it's not an ordinary subject. He bears responsibility for what is done. Has it occurred to you that what has been done not well might have been done worse with a different Chancellor? Oh, believe me, Sir Thomas. Your influence in these policies has been much searched for and praised where it has been found. But... There comes a point, doesn't there not? Comes a point? When the sufferings of one unfortunate lady swell to an open attack on the religion of an entire country, that point is... What do you want? Rumor has it that if the bishops assemble today, submit to the king, you will resign. You would approve of that? Oh, approve, applaud. Admire. Why? Why? Because it would show that one man, yes, and that man known to be temperate, is unable to go any further with this wickedness. <laughs> and that man known to be Chancellor of England, too. Oh, believe me, my lord, such a signal. A signal? Yes, my lord, a signal that will be seen and understood. Uh, by whom? By half your fellow countrymen. Sir Thomas, I have just returned from Yorkshire and Northumberland, where I have made a tour. Have you indeed? Things are very different up there, my lord. There they are ready. For what? Resistance. Sir Thomas. Excuse me, sir. His Grace the Duke of North. It's all over, sir. All right, Dick Roper. I'll do this. Thomas. I was on the point of leaving, Your Grace. Just a personal call. I've been trying to borrow a book, but without success. If you're sure that you have no copy, my lord, I'll take my leave. Gentlemen. Ah, ladies. Thomas. I'll do it, Roper. Well, the bishops have knuckled under Thomas. They're to pay a fine of a hundred thousand pounds to the crown, and we've severed the connection with Rome. The connection with Rome? That's nice. <sighs> Did no one resist? Bishop Fisher? Lovely man. Your Grace, this is quite certain, is it? Yes. Funny company, Thomas. The Dacre. It's quite unintentional. He doesn't mean to be funny. <sighs> no fun. <coughs> Help me with this, will you? Not I. Shall I, sir? No, thank you, Will. I can manage it. Alice. Oh, hell's fire, no! Master Moore, you're taken for a wise man. See, is this your wisdom to betray your ability, forget your station and your duty to your kin, and behave like a printed book?
Margaret, will you? If you want. There's my clever girl. Well, Thomas, why? Make me understand, because I tell you now, from where I stand, this looks like cowardice. No. This isn't reformation. This is war against the church. Our King Norfolk has declared war on the Pope. Because the Pope will not declare that our Queen is not his wife. And is she? I'll answer that question for one man only, the King. I am that in private, too. <laughs> and you're cautious. Yes, cautious. I'm not one of your hawks. All right, we're at war with the Pope. The Pope's a prince, isn't he? He is. And a bad one. Bad enough. But the theory is he's also the Vicar of God, the descendant of St. Peter, our only link with Christ. Oh, does this make sense? You forfeit. All you've got, which includes the respect of your country, for a theory. It's a theory, yes. You can't see it, you can't touch it. But what matters to me is that I believe it to be true. Or rather, not that I believe it, but that I believe it. I trust I make myself obscure. Ah, perfectly. Good. Obscurity is what I have need of now. Thomas, this isn't Spain, you know. <laughs> Have I your word that what we say here is between us and has no existence beyond these walls? Uh, very well. And if the king should command you to repeat what I say? Oh, keep my word to you. Then what becomes of your oath of obedience to the king? Lay traps for me. No, I show you the time. Why do you insult me with your lawyer's tricks? Because I'm afraid. Oh. Then here's your answer. The king accepts your resignation very sadly. He is mindful of your goodness and past loyalty, and in any matter concerning your honor or welfare, he will be your good lord. So much for your fear. You will convey my humble gratitude. I will. Good day, Lady Alice. I'd rather deal with you than your husband. Oh, Howard. Senor Chafui told me he's just made a tour of the North Country. He thinks we shall have trouble there. So do I. Yes, what sort of trouble? The church. The, the old church is very strong up there. Oh. I'm serious, Howard. Keep a close eye on the Scots border this next year. and Remember the French alliance. We will. We do. And as for the Dago, Thomas, it may perhaps relieve your mind to know that one of Secretary Cromwell's agents made the tour with him. Oh, well, of course, if Master Cromwell has matters in hand. He has, but thanks for the information. It's good to know you still have some vestige of patriotism. Norfolk! So there's the end of you. What will you do now? Sit by the fire and poke in the ashes. Well, not at all, Alice. I expect I'll write a bit. Yes, I'll write, I'll read, I'll think. I think I'll learn to fish. I'll play with my grandchildren when son Roper's done his duty. Alice, shall I teach you to read? No, by God! Sir, you've made a noble gesture. Gesture? My God, I hope it's understood. I make no gesture. Alice, you don't think I'd do this to you for a gesture, but that's a gesture. That's a gesture. I'm no street actor. I've had to make gestures. I'm practical. Sir, you belittle yourself. This wasn't practical. This was moral. Oh, now I understand you well. Morality is not practical. Morality is a, a gesture, a complicated gesture learned from books. Yeah, that's what you say, isn't it, Alice? Yeah, and you too, Meg. It is for most of us, Father. Oh, if you're going to plead humility, you're, you're cruel. Hmm? I have a cruel family. Yes, you can fit the cap on anyone you want. I know that well enough. If there's cruelty in this house, I know where to look for it. No, Mother! Oh, you'd walk on the bottom of the sea and think yourself a crab if he suggested it. And you, you dance him to the tower. You dance him to the block. <laughs> 
like David with his harp, <laughs> scattering hymn books in his path. <laughs> oh, you poor silly man! Do you think they're going to leave you here to learn to fish? If we govern our tongues, they will. Now listen. I've something to say about that. I have resigned, that's all. I've made no statement on the king's supremacy of his new English church and the divorce he'll now grant himself and the marriage he'll then make. Have you heard me make a statement? No, and, and, and if I'm going to lose my rank and fall to housekeeping, I want to know the reason, so you make a statement now. No. <laughs> Alice, it's a point of law. Accept it from me, Alice, that in silence lies my safety under the law. But my silence must be absolute. It must extend to you. In short, you don't trust us. A man would need to be half-witted not to trust you. Look, I'm the Lord Chief Justice. No, no, I'm Cromwell. I'm the King's head jailer. I take your hand and I clamp it on the Bible, on the blessed cross. And I say to you, woman, has your husband made a statement on these matters? Now, on peril of your soul, remember. What's your answer? No. And so it must remain. Oh. Oh. It's only a lifeline. We shan't have to use it, but it's comforting to have. No, no. If they find I'm silent, they'll ask nothing better than to leave me silent. You'll see. Sir, the household's in the kitchen. They want to know what's happened. Oh, yes. We must speak to them. They'll mostly have to go, my dear, I'm afraid, but uh, not before we've found them places. We can find places for them all. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. You go and tell them so. Now. God's death, it comes on us quickly. Well, Matthew, what about you? Smaller household now, and for you, I'm afraid, a smaller wage. Will you stay? Well, I don't see how I could, sir. Well, you're a single man. Yes, I know, sir, but, I mean, I've got my... Oh, you're quite right. Why should you? <laughs> oh, I shall miss you, Matthew. No. You've never had much time for me, sir. You see through me, sir. I know that. I shall miss you, Matthew. I shall miss you. Damn me, isn't that them all over? Miss, he, miss, miss me. What's in me for him to miss? Oh. <laughs> I nearly fell for it. Matthew, will you kindly take a cut in your wages? No, Sir Thomas, I will not. That's it, that's all of it. All right, so he's down in his luck. I'm sorry. I don't mind saying that, I'm sorry, bad luck. If I had any good luck to spare, he could have some. I wish we all had good luck, all the time. I wish we had wings. I wish rainwater was beer, but it isn't. And what, we're not having wings, but walking on two flat feet, and good luck and bad luck being just exactly even Stevens, and rain being water. Don't you complicate the job by putting things in me for me to miss. I did, you know. I nearly fell for it. But he makes no noise, Master Secretary. He's silent. Why not leave him silent? Not being a man of letters, Your Grace. Uh, you perhaps don't realize the extent of his reputation. This silence of his is bellowing up and down Europe now. May I recapitulate? He reported the ambassador's conversation to you. He informed on the ambassador's tour of the North Country and warned of a possible rebellion there. He did. Uh, we may say then that he showed himself hostile to the hopes of Spain. That's what I say! Bear with me, Your Grace. If he opposes Spain, he supports us. Well, surely that follows, or do you see some third alternative? Well, that's the line-up, all right, and I may say, Thomas More... Thomas More will line up on the right side. Yes. Crank, he may be. Traitor, he's not. And with a little pressure, he can be got to say so. That's all we need, a brief declaration of loyalty to the present administration. Well, I still say, let sleeping dogs lie. The king does not agree with you. Now, what sort of pressure do you think you can bring to bear? I have evidence that Sir Thomas, during his period of judicature, accepted bribes. What? 
God damn it, he's the only judge since Cato didn't accept bribes. When was there last a chancellor whose possessions, after three years in office, totaled 100 pounds and a gold chain? A judge? It is, as you imply, a common practice, but a practice may be common and remain an offence. And this offence could send a man to the tower. Well, I don't believe it. Ah, oh, Richard, I believe you know his grace. Oh, indeed, yes. We are old friends. Yeah, you used to look after my books or something, didn't you? Come here. This woman's name is Catherine Anger. She comes from Lincoln. And she put a case in the court of requests. A property case, it was. Be quiet. A property case in the court of requests in April 1526. And got a wicked false judgment. And got an impeccably correct judgment from our friend Sir Thomas. No, sir, it was not. We are not concerned with the judgment, but with the gift you gave to the judge. Tell the gentleman about that. The judgment, for what it was worth, was the correct one. I sent him a cup. An Italian silver cup that I bought in Lincoln for a hundred shillings. Let Sir Thomas accept this cup. Well, I sent it. He did accept it. We can corroborate that. You may go. I want to go! Is that your witness? No. By an odd coincidence, the cup later came into the hands of Master Rich here. Oh, he gave it to me. Can you corroborate that? I have a fellow outside who can. He was more steward at the time. Uh, shall I call him? Don't bother. I know him. When did Thomas give you this thing? I don't exactly remember. Well, make an effort. I can tell you. I can tell you. It was that spring, it was that evening that we were there together. You had a cup with you when we left. Was this it? It may have been. I Did can't... he often give you cups? I don't suppose so, Your Grace. This was it, then? Yes. And it was April. It was the April of 26, the very month that cow first put her case before him. In other words, the moment he knew it was a bribe, he got rid of it. The facts will bear that interpretation, I suppose. This is a horse that won't run, Master Secretary. Just a trial canter, Your Grace. We'll find something better. Now, look here, Cromwell. I want no part of this. You have no choice. What's that you say? The King particularly wishes you to be active in this matter. Well, he hasn't told me that. Oh, indeed. Told me. But why? Well, we feel that since you are known to be a friend of Moore's, your participation will show that there is nothing in the nature of a persecution, but only the strict processes of the law, as indeed you've just demonstrated. Now, I'll tell the king of your loyalty to your friend. If you like, I'll tell him you want no part in it, too. Are you threatening me, Cromwell? My dear Norfolk, this isn't Spain. Secretary, I'm sorry. I'd completely forgotten that he was there that night. You must try to remember these things. Yes, Secretary. I'm sincerely sorry. Not such a fool as he looks, the Duke. That would hardly be possible, Secretary. Sir Thomas is going to be a slippery fish, Richard. We need a net with a finer mesh. Yes, Secretary? We'll weave one for him, shall we? You and I. I'm only anxious to do what is correct, Secretary. Oh, yes, Richard, I know you're absolutely right. It must be done by law. It's just a matter of finding the right law. Or making one. Bring my papers, will you? Could uh, we have a word now, sir? We don't require you after all, Matthew. No, sir, but about the... Oh, yes. Well, I begin to need a steward, certainly. My household is expanding. But as I remember, Matthew, your attitude to me was sometimes disrespectful. 
Oh, I, I must contradict you there, sir. That's your imagination, sir. You see, in those days, sir, you still had your way to make. And a gentleman in that position often imagines these things. And then, when he's reached his proper level, he stops thinking about it. Well, I don't think you find people disrespectful nowadays, do you, sir? There may be something in that. Bring my papers. I'll permit no breath of insolence. No, I should hope not, sir. Well, I can manage this one. It's just my size. My husband is coming down, Your Excellency. Ah, oh, thank you, madam. And I beg you to be gone before he does. Madam, I have a royal commission to perform. Aye, so you said. Sheer barbarity. Commend me to a good-hearted Englishwoman. It's very cold, Excellency. Yes. I remember when these rooms were warm enough. Thus it is to incur the enmity of a king. A heretic king. Ah, Your Excellency. Ah, Sir Thomas. Is this another personal visit or is it official? It falls between the two, Sir Thomas. Mm. Official, then? No. I bring a personal letter for you. Oh, from whom? From my master, King Charles. Why, well, you will take it. I will not lay a finger on it. But it is in no way an affair of state. It expresses my master's admiration for the stand that you have taken over the so-called divorce of Queen Catherine. I have taken no stand. Uh, well, no, Sir Thomas, but uh, your views are well known. My views are much guessed at. <laughs> Come, sir, could you undertake to convince King Harry that this letter is in no way an affair of state? Ah, oh, believe me, Sir Thomas, I have taken every precaution. I've come here very much incognito, very nearly in disguise. You misunderstand me, sir. It's not a matter of your precaution, but my duty, which would be to take that letter immediately to the king. But, Sir Thomas, your view. Now, well known, you say. Seems my loyalty to my king is less so. Look, father. Will's getting more. Oh, well done. Well done. Oh, it's dry, too. It's bracken, Your Excellency. We burn it. Alice, look at this. Aye. Your Excellency, may I? This is a letter from the King of Spain. I want you to see it has not been opened. I have declined it, you see. The seal has not been broken. I wish I could ask you to stay, Your Excellency. The bracken fires are luxury. One I must forego. Come. May I say, I am sure my master's admiration will not be diminished. Luxury. Well, it is a luxury while it lasts. I'm afraid there's not much sport in it for you, is there? Alice, that uh, money from the bishops, I, I can't take it. I, I wish, heavens, how I wish I could, but I can't. I didn't think you would. Well, there are reasons, Alice. We couldn't come so deep into your confidence as to know these reasons. Why a man in poverty can't take 4,000 pounds? Uh, this is in poverty. You know what we're going to eat for dinner tonight? Yes, parsnips. Yes, parsnips and stinking mutton for a night's lady. Well, at the worst, we could be beggars and still keep company and be merry together. Ha <laughs> ha, merry. I merry. I think you should take that money. Don't you see if I'm paid by the church for my writings? This had nothing to do with your writings. This was charity, pure and simple, collected from the clergy high and low. It would appear as payment. You're not a man who deals with appearances. No, am I not, though? If the king takes this any further, with me or with the church, it will be very bad if I even appear to have been in the pay of the church. Bad? If you will, have it dangerous. You don't write against the king. I write. That's enough in times like these. But you, but you said there was no danger. I don't think there is, and I don't want there to be. Sir Thomas, there's a gentleman here from Hampton Court. You ought to go before Secretary Cromwell to answer certain charges. What? It's all right. We expected that. When? Now. Oh, I... Alice, that means nothing. That's just technique. Well... I suppose now means now. Can I come with you? Why? Oh, I'll be back for supper. I'll bring Cromwell back for supper, shall I? <laughs> if that would serve him right. Oh, Father, don't be witty. Why not? Wit's what's in question. While we're witty, the devil may enter us unawares. Oh, he's not the devil, son Roper. He's a lawyer, and my case is watertight. You say he's a very penetrating lawyer. Oh, Cromwell! 
He's a pragmatist, a mere mechanic. I'm sorry to invite you here at such short notice, Sir Thomas. It's good of you to come. Would you take a seat? I believe you know Master Rich. Indeed, yes, my old friends. That's a nice gown you have, Richard. Master Rich will make a record of our conversation. Good of you to tell me, Master Secretary. Believe me, Sir Thomas. Uh, no, that's asking too much. But let me tell you all the same, you have no more sincere admirer than myself. Not yet, Rich, not yet. If I might hear the charges. Charges? I understand there are certain charges. Some ambiguities of behavior I should like to clarify. Hardly charges. Make a note of that, will you, Master Rich? There are no charges. Sir Thomas. Sir Thomas, you know, it amazes me that you, who were once so effective in the world and are now so much retired from it, should be opposing yourself against the whole movement of the times. It amazes me, too. The king is not pleased with you. I am grieved. And yet, do you know that even now, if you were able to bring yourself to agree with the bishops and the universities and the parliament of this realm, there is no honor that the king would be likely to deny you. I am well acquainted with his grace's generosity. Very well. You have heard of the so-called Holy Maid of Kent who was executed for prophesying against the king. Yes, I knew the poor woman. You sympathize with her? She was ignorant and misguided. She was a bit mad, I think, and she has paid for her folly. Naturally, I sympathize with her. You admit meeting her. You met her, and yet you did not warn His Majesty of her treason. How was that? She spoke no treason. Now, our conversation was not political. Oh, my dear Moore, the woman was notorious. You expect me to believe that? Happily, there are witnesses. You have been cautious. I like to keep my affairs regular. Sir Thomas, there is a more serious charge. Charge? For want of a better word. In the May of 1526, the king published a book, a theological work. It was entitled A Defense of the Seven Sacraments. Yes for which he was named Defender of the Faith by His Holiness the Pope. By the Bishop of Rome, uh, or do you insist on Pope? No, Bishop of Rome, if you like. It doesn't alter his authority. Thank you. You come to the point very readily. What is that authority with regard to the church in other parts of Europe, for example, the church in England? What exactly is the Bishop of Rome's authority? You will find it very ably set forth and defended, Master Secretary, in the King's book. The book published under the king's name would be more accurate. You wrote this book. I wrote no part of it. <laughs> I do not mean that you actually held the pen. I merely answered to the best of my ability certain questions on canon law which His Majesty put to me, as I was bound to do. Do you deny that you instigated it? It was from first to last the king's own project. This is trivial, Master Cromwell. Oh, I should not think so if I were in your place. Only two people know the truth of the matter, myself and the king. Whatever he may have said to you, he will not give evidence to support this accusation. Why not? Because evidence is given on oath, and he will not perjure himself. If you don't know that, you don't yet know him. Sir Thomas More, is there anything that you wish to say to me concerning the King's marriage with Queen Anne? 
I understood I was not to be asked that again. Evidently, you understood wrongly. These charges... The terrors for children, Master Cromwell, not me! I charge you with great ingratitude. I remind you of the many benefits graciously given and ill-received. I tell you that no king of England ever had nor could have so villainous a servant, nor so traitorous a subject as yourself. These are not my words, Sir Thomas. They are the king's. Yes. I recognize the style. So, I am brought here at last. Brought? You brought yourself to where you are now. Yes. Still, in another sense, I was brought. Oh, yes. You may go home now. For the present. <sighs> I don't like him as well as I did. There's a man who raises a gale and won't come out of harbour. Do you still think that you can frighten him? Oh, yes. Well, what will you do now, then? Oh, be quiet, Rich. We'll do whatever's necessary. <sighs> the King is a man of conscience. He wants either Sir Thomas More to bless his marriage or Sir Thomas More destroyed. Either will do. They seem odd alternatives, Secretary. Yeah, do they? That's because you are not a man of conscience. If the King destroys a man, that is proof to the King that it must have been a bad man. The kind of man a man of conscience ought to destroy. And, of course, a bad man's blessings not worth having, so... Either will do. I see. Oh, there's no going back, Rich. I find we've made ourselves the keepers of this conscience. And it's ravenous. That? Boatman! Howard, oh, I can't get home. They won't bring me a boat. You blame them? It is as bad as that, then. It's every bit as bad as that. Then it's good of you to be seen with me. I followed you. Were you followed? Probably. So listen to what I have to say. You're behaving like a fool. You're behaving like a crank. You're not behaving like a gentleman. All right. I know that means nothing to you, but what about your friends? What about them? God damn it, you're dangerous to know. Then don't know me. <clears throat> Look, there's one thing for... You must have realized by now that there's a policy in regards to you. Mm -hmm. The king is using me in it. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> that's Cromwell. You're between the upper and the nether millstones, then. I am. Howard, you must cease to know me. I do know you. Now, I, I mean... wish to God I didn't, but I don't. I mean as a friend. You are my friend. I can't relieve you of your obedience to the king, Howard. You must relieve yourself of our friendship. No one is safe now. You have a son. You might just as well fight a man to change the color of his hair. I'm fond of you, and there it is. You're fond of me, and there it is. <laughs> What's to be done, then? Give in. I can't give in. You might as well advise a man to change the color of his no. eyes. I can't, Howard. Our friendship's more mutable than that. Oh. So the one fixed point in a world of changing friendships is that Thomas More will not give in. Well, for me, it has to be. It's myself. Affection runs as deep in me as you, I think, but only God is love right through, Howard. That's myself. And who are you? <laughs> Damn it, man, it's disproportionate. We're supposed to be the arrogant ones, the proud, splenetic ones, and we've all given in. Why must you stand out? You'll break my heart. Let's do it now, Howard. We'll part as friends and meet as strangers. Ah, Thomas. Why do you want to take your friendship from me? For friendship's sake? You say we'll meet as strangers, and every word you say confirms our friendship. That can be remedied. 
John, no folk, you are a fool. You can't place a quarrel you haven't the style. No, no, hear me out. You and your class have given in, as you rightly call it, because the religion of this country means nothing to you one way or the other. Oh, that's a foolish saying for a start. The nobility of England... The nobility of England, my lord, would have snored through the Sermon on the Mount. Yet you labor like saints over some rat dog's pedigree. What's the name of those distorted creatures you're all breeding at the moment? An artificial quarrel is not a quarrel. Don't deceive yourself, my lord. We've had a quarrel since the day we met. You can be cool when you have a mind to be. But I've always known that. Yeah, what do you call those dogs, though? Marsh mastiffs? Bog beagle? Water spaniels. What would you do with a water spaniel that was afraid of water? You'd drown it! Well, as a spaniel is to water, so is a man to his own self. I will not give in because I oppose it. I do. Not my pride, not my spleen, nor any other of my appetites, but I do. I! Is there no single sinew in the midst of this that serves no appetite of Norfolk's, but is just Norfolk? There is. Give that some exercise, my lord. Because as you stand, you'll go before your maker in a very ill condition. Steady, Thomas. And you'll have to think that somewhere back along your pedigree, a bitch got over the wall. <laughs> Father, what was that? That was Norfolk. Do you know, sir, have you heard? What? Have you told him? We've been looking for you, Father. There's to be a new act through Parliament, sir. Act? Yes, sir, about the marriage. Oh. Father, by this act, they're going to administer an oath. An oath? And what compulsion? It's expected to be treason. What is the oath? It's about the marriage, sir. What is the wording? We don't need to know the wording. We know what it'll mean. It'll mean what the words say. An oath is made of words. It may be possible to take it or to avoid it. If I can, I will. Do we have a copy of the bill? There's one coming out from the city. No, oh, well, let's get it. Oh. I've no boat. Oh, Father, he hit you. Yes, I spoke slightingly of water spaniels. Come on. But, sir. Will, you listen. God made the angels to show him splendor. Man he made to serve him wittily in the tangle of his mind. Our natural business lies in escaping. So let's get home and study this bill. It's a job. The pay scale being what it is, they get a rather common type of man in the prison service, but it's a job like any other job. A bit nearer the knuckle than most, perhaps. But it's a job. I don't suppose anyone enjoyed it any more than he did. Well, not much more. They'd have let him out if they could, but for various reasons, they can't. I'd have let him out if I could, but I can't. Not without taking up residence in there myself. And if he's in there already, what's the point? The old adage says, better a live rat than a dead lion. Sir Thomas, wake up. Mm. Oh, oh, what? Oh, not again. Sorry, sir. Oh, what time is it? One o'clock, sir. Oh, this is iniquitous. Sir? Who's there? The secretary. The Duke and the Archbishop. Oh, I'm flattered. Seat for the prisoner. Do the witnesses attend? Oh, Mr. Secretary. Right, stand together. This is the seventh commission to inquire into the case of Sir Thomas More, appointed by His Majesty's Council. Do you have anything to say? Secretary. Sir Thomas, you have seen this document before. Many times. It is the act of succession. These are the names of those who have sworn to it. I have, as you say, seen it before. 
Will you swear to it? No. Thomas, we must know Clayton. Your Grace, please. I'm trying. Master Cromwell! I beg your Grace's pardon. Thomas, we must know plainly whether you recognize the offspring of Queen Anne as heirs to His Majesty. The King in Parliament tells me that they are. Of course I recognize them. Will you swear that you do? Yes. Then why can't you swear to the Act? Because there is more than that in the Act. Is that it? Yes. And we must find out what it is in the Act that he objects to. Brilliant. Oh, God's wounds! Your Grace, may I try? Certainly. I have no pretensions to be an expert in police work. Sir Thomas, it states in the preamble that the King's former marriage to the Lady Catherine was unlawful, she being previously his brother's wife, and the uh, <clears throat> Pope having no authority to sanction it. Is that what you deny? Is that what you dispute? Is that what you are not sure of? Thomas, you insult the king and his council in the person of the Lord Archbishop. I insult no one. I will not take the oath. I will not tell you why I will not. And your reasons must be treasonable. Not must be. Maybe. It's a fair assumption. The law requires more than an assumption. The law requires a fact. I cannot judge your legal standing in the case, but until I know the ground of your objections, I can only guess your spiritual standing too. If you're willing to guess it, that, Your Grace, it should be a small matter to guess it, my objections. You do have objections to the Act. Oh, we know that, Cromwell. You don't, my lord. You may suppose I have objections. All you know is that I will not swear. From sheer delight to give you trouble, it might be. Is it material why you want? No, oh, it's most material. For refusing to swear, my goods are forfeit, and I am condemned to life imprisonment. You cannot lawfully harm me further. But if you were right in supposing I had reasons for refusing, and right again in supposing those reasons to be treasonable, the law would let you cut my head off. Yes. Oh, well done, Sir Thomas. I've been trying to make that clear to His Grace for some time. Confound all this. I'm no... I'm no scholar, as... Master Cromwell never ceases to remind me. And frankly, I don't know whether the, the marriage is legal or not. But damn it, Thomas, look at those knaves. Why can't you do what I did and come with us for fellowship? And when we stand before God and you are sent to paradise for doing according to your conscience, and I am damned for not doing according to mine, will you come with me for fellowship? So those of us whose names are there are damned, Sir Thomas? I don't know, Your Grace. I have no window to look into another man's soul. I condemn no one. No, I will not sign. Mm. Then you have more regard to your own doubt than you have to the King's command. For myself, I have no doubt at all. No doubt? Of what? No doubt at my reasons for refusing this oath. Reasons I will reveal to the King alone in which you, Master Cromwell, will not trick out of me. Thomas. My gentleman, can't I go to bed? You don't seem to appreciate the seriousness of your position. I defy any man to live in that hole for a year and not appreciate the seriousness of his position. Yet the state has harsher punishments. You threaten like a dockside bully. How should I threaten? Like a minister of state with justice. Oh, justice is what you're threatened with. Then I'm not threatened. Master Cromwell. I think the prisoner may retire, as he requests. <coughs> Unless you, my lord... No, no, I see no purpose in prolonging the interview. <clears throat> Thomas. Good night. Oh, might I have one or two more books? You have books. Yes? I didn't know. You shouldn't have. May I 
See my family? No. speak of the king's divorce or the king's supremacy of the church or the king's marriage no sir it's not a word if you do you will of course report it to the lieutenant oh, of course sir. you will swear an oath to that effect certainly sir archbishop place your left hand here raise your right hand and take your hat off now say after me I swear by my immortal soul. I swear by my immortal soul. That I will report truly. That I will report truly. Anything said by Sir Thomas More. Anything said by Sir Thomas More. Against, against the king. Against the king. Council, the council. State, the state of, the realm, of the realm. So help, help me God. God amen. And there's 50 guineas in it if you do. That's not to tempt you into perjury, my man. Oh, no. 50 guineas isn't tempting. 50 guineas is alarming. If they'd left it at swearing, but 50, that's serious money. If it's worth that now, it's worth my neck presently. I want no part of it. Let them sort it out between them. I feel my deafness coming on. Rich. Secretary. Tomorrow morning, remove the prisoner's books. Is that necessary? Norfolk, with regards to this case, the king is becoming impatient. Aye. With you. With all of us. And you know the king's impatience. How commodious it is. Secretary? Yes. Sir Redvers Llewellyn has retired. What? The Attorney General for Wales. His post is vacant. You said that I might approach oh, you. Oh, not now, Rich. You must submit. The alternatives are bad. While Moore's alive, the King's conscience breaks into fresh stinking flowers every time he gets in his bed. And if I bring about Moore's death, I plant my own, I think. There's no other good solution. He must submit. Wake up, Sir Thomas. Huh? Uh, Your family's here. Oh, oh Margaret. <laughs> Father. Let me out of this. Let me out. Yes, I'm allowed to let you out. Good morning, Father. Oh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Margaret. Good morning. Good morning. My God, Meg, they've not put you in here, too. No, sir. Just a visit. A uh, short visit. <gasps> Husband, how'd you do? As well as need be. They're very happy now. Well, this is an awful place. No, it, it's not so bad, except for keeping me from you, my dears. It's remarkably like any other place. It drips. Yeah, it's too near the river. We've brought you some things. Oh. Some cheese. Oh, cheese. And a custard. Ah, custard. Mm. And a bottle of wine. Oh. Is it good, son Robert? I, I don't know, sir. <laughs> Where? What do you... Sir, come out. I swear to the act. Take the oath and come out. Oh, dear. Is that why they let you come visit me? Yes. Meg's under oath to persuade you. It was very silly, Meg. How did you come to do that? I wanted to. You want me to swear to the act of succession? God more regards the thoughts of the heart than the words of the mouth. Or so you've always told me. Mm. And say the words of the oath. But in your heart, think otherwise. Now, what is an oath, then, but words we say to God? Oh, that's very neat. You mean it isn't true? No, it's true. Well, then it's a poor argument to call it neat. Meg, when a man takes an oath, he... Oh, 
holds his own self in his two hands, li like water. If he opens his fingers, he needn't look to find himself again. Some men aren't capable of this, but I think you'd be sorry to find your father one of them. In any state that was half good, you would be raised up high. Not here for what you've done already. It's not your fault the state's three quarters bad. No. Then if you elect to suffer for it, you elect yourself a hero. Oh, now that is very neat. Uh, but look, you. If we lived in a state where virtue was profitable, common sense would make us good and greed would make us saintly, huh? We'd all live like animals or angels in the happy land that needs no heroes. But since, in fact, we find that we have to choose to be human at all, then perhaps we must stand fast a little, even at the risk of being heroes. But in reason! Haven't you done as much as God can reasonably want? Finally, it isn't a question of reason. Finally, it's a question of love. Then you're content to stay here, shut up with mice and rats, when you might be home with us. Content? If they'd open a crack that wide, I'd be through it like a bird and home. Well, has Eve run out of apples, then? I've not yet told you what the house is like without you. Don't, Meg. What we do in the evenings now that you're not there? Meg, have done. We sit in the dark because we've no candles. And we've no talk because we're wondering what they're doing to you here. Now, the king's more merciful than you. He doesn't use the rack. Two minutes to go, sir. I thought you'd like to know. Two minutes? Until seven o'clock, sir. Sorry, two minutes. Jailer. 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 Will, go to me. Talk to me. Keep him occupied. Well, how, sir? Well, anyhow, do, do, do you have any money? Yes. Now, wait. Don't try to bribe him. Let him play for it. He's got a pair of dice. And if, talk to him, you understand? Wait. Here. Take the wine. And mind you, share it, Will. Do it properly now. Leave the country. All of you must leave the country at once. I'll leave you here. It makes no difference, Meg. They won't let you see me again. You must leave in the same day, but not the same boat. Different boats from different ports. After the trial, then. There'll be no trial. They have no case. Do this for me, I beseech you. Yes. Alice? Alice, I command you. Right. Right. Oh, this is splendid. I know who packed this. I packed it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> you do make superlative custard, Ellis. Do I? Mm. It's a nice dress you've got on. It's my cooking dress. Well, it's very nice anyway, sir. Nice color. My God, you think very little of me. I know I'm a fool, but I'm no such fool as at a time like this to be lamented from my dresses or to relish being complimented on my custard. I am well rebuked. Alice. I am faint when I think of the worst that they may do to me, but worse than that would be to go with you not understanding why I go. I don't. Alice, if you tell me that you understand, I think I can make a good death if I have to. Your death's no good to me. Alice, you must tell me that you understand. I don't. I don't believe it had to happen. If you say that, Alice, I don't see how I'm to face it. That's the truth. You're an honest woman. Which oh, could make it to me. I'll tell you what I'm afraid of, that when you're gone, I'll hate you for it. Well, you mustn't, Alice, that's all. You, you simply mustn't. <laughs> As for understanding, I, I understand this, that you're the best man I ever met and I'm ever likely to. And if you do go, well, God knows why, I suppose. Though as God's my witness, God's kept deathly quiet about it. 
And if anyone wants my opinion about the king and his council, all they've got to do is ask me for it. Why, it's the lion I married. The lion. You know, you must get them to take some of that custard to Bishop Fisher. He's in the upper gallery. I made it for you. I didn't make it for Bishop Fisher. Can't you do as I ask? You say what you like. That's good custard. It's very, very good. No good, sir. I know what you're up to, and it can't be done. Another minute, man. Sorry, sir. Time's up. For pity, sir. Don't me. do that, sir. Sir Thomas, the ledgers will have to go now. You said seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock now, sir. You must understand my position. One minute more. Just a little while. Just a little while. Now then, miss, you don't want to get me into trouble. Don't do as you told. Don't be up at once. Now, come along, miss. You'll get your father into trouble as well as me. Are you obstructing me, sir? <laughs> now then, my lady. No trouble. Don't you. Oh, you take your muddy hands off me. I'm going to call the guard then. Then come on. For God's sake, man, we're saying goodbye. You don't know what you're asking, sir. You don't know how you're watched. Oh, you filthy, stinking, gutter-bred tonkey! Call me what you like, ma'am. You've got to go. I'll make you suffer for this! You're doing your husband no good! Alice, goodbye. <laughs> My love. my position, sir. There's nothing I can do. I'm a plain, simple man. Just want to keep out of trouble. Sweet Jesus! <laughs> These plain, simple men Where are you going? Well, I'm, uh, I'm finished here, sir. You're foreman of the jury. Oh, no. Foreman of the jury. Does the cap fit? <sighs> All men be upstanding. Disgrace the Duke of Norfolk. Earl Marshal of England. Sir Thomas More, you have been called before us here in the Great Hall of Westminster to answer charge of high treason. Nevertheless, and though you have grievously offended the King's Majesty, we hope if you will even now forthink and repent your obstinate opinions, you may still taste his gracious pardon. My lords, I thank you. Albeit, I pray God will keep me in this my honest mind to the last hour I shall live. As for the matters you may charge me with, I, I fear, owing to my present weakness, that neither my wit nor my memory will serve to make sufficient answer. I should be glad to sit down. Be seated. 
Master Secretary Cromwell, have you the charge? I have, my lord. And read the charge. That you did conspire traitorously and maliciously to deny and deprive our liege Lord Henry of his undoubted certain title, Supreme Head of the Church of England. I have never denied this title. You refused the oath when tendered you at the Tower and elsewhere. Silence is not denial. For my silence, I am punished with imprisonment. Why have I been called again? To answer charge of high treason, Sir Thomas. For which the punishment is not imprisonment. Death comes for us all, my lords. As even for kings he comes. Amidst their royalty and strength, he will not kneel nor make them any reverence, but roughly grasp them by the throat and rattle them till they be stark dead. Treason enough here. The death of kings is not in question, Sir Thomas. No, mine I trust until I'm proven guilty. Your life lies in your own hands, Thomas, as it always has. And so, Sir Thomas, you stand upon your silence. I do. But, gentlemen of the jury, there are many kinds of silence. Consider first the silence of a man when he is dead. Let us say we go into a room where he is lying, and let us say it is the dead of night. There's nothing like darkness for sharpening the ear. And we listen, what do we hear? Silence. What does it betoken, this silence? Nothing. This is silence, pure and simple. But consider another case. Suppose I were to draw a dagger from my sleeve and make to kill the prisoner with it. And suppose their lordships here, instead of crying out for me to stop, or crying out for help to stop me, maintained their silence. That would betoken. That would betoken a willingness that I should do it. And under the law, they would be guilty with me. So silence can, according to circumstances, speak. Consider now the circumstances of the prisoner's silence. The oath was put to good and faithful subjects up and down the country, and they declared his grace's title to be just and good. Yet when he came to the prisoner, he refused. He calls this silence. But is there a man in this court? Is there a man in this country who does not know Sir Thomas More's opinion of this title? Of course not. How can this be? Because this silence betokened, nay, this silence was not silence at all, but a most eloquent denial. Not so, Master Secretary. The maxim is qui tocit consentire. The, the maxim of the law is silence gives consent. If therefore you wish to know what my silence betokened you, must construe that I consented, not that I denied. Is that in fact what the world construes from it? Do you pretend that that is what you wish the world to construe from it? The world must construe according to its wits. This court must construe according to the law. I put it to the court. The prisoner is perverting the law, making smoky what should be a clear light to discover to the court his own wrongdoing. The law is not a light for you or any man to see by. The law is not an instrument of any kind. The law is a causeway upon which, so long as he keep to it, the citizen may walk safely in matters of the conscience. The conscience. The conscience. The word is not familiar to you. By God, too familiar. I'm very used to hearing it in the mouths of criminals. I'm used to hear bad men misuse the name of God, yet God exists. In matters of the conscience, the loyal subject is bound more to be loyal to his conscience than to any other thing. And so provide a noble motive for his frivolous self-conceit. Not so, Master Cromwell, but for my own soul. Your own self, you mean? Yes, a man's soul is his self. A miserable thing, whatever you call it, that lives like a bat in a Sunday school, a shrill, incessant pedagogue about its own salvation, but nothing to say about your place in the state, under the king, in a great native country. Is it my place to say yes to the state's sickness? Can I help my king by giving him lies when he asks for truth? 
Will you help England by populating her with liars? My lords! Silence! My lords, I should like to call Sir Richard Rich. Call Sir Richard Rich. Call Sir Richard Rich! I do solemnly swear that the evidence... I do solemnly swear that the evidence that I shall give before the court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God, Sir Richard. So help me God. Take your stand there, Sir Richard. Now... Rich, on the 12th of March, you were at the Tower. I was. Uh, with what purpose? I was sent to carry away the prisoner's books. And did you speak with the prisoner? Yes. And did you speak of the king's supremacy of the church? Yes. What did you say? I said to him, <clears throat> supposing there was an act of parliament, to say that I, Richard Rich, were to become king. Would not you, Master Moore, take me for king? Well, that I would, he said, for then you would be king. Yes. Then he said... The prisoner? Yes, my lord. Mm -hmm. But I will put you a higher case. How, if there were an act of parliament, to say that God should not be God? This is true. Then you said... Silence. Continue. I said... But I will put you a middle case. Parliament has made our king the head of the church. Why will you not accept him? Well? Then he said that Parliament had no power to do it. Repeat the prisoner's words. He said that Parliament has not the competence, or words to that effect. He denied the title. He did. You've got faith, Rich. I am sorrier for your perjury than my peril. You denied it? Yes. My lords, if I were a man who heeded not the taking of an oath, you know well I had no need to be here. Now I will take an oath. If what Master Rich has said is true. I pray I may never see God in the face, which I would not say were it otherwise for anything on earth. That is not evidence. Is it probable that after so long a silence on this, the very point so urgently sought of me, I should open my mind to such a man as that? Do you wish to modify your statement, Rich? No, Secretary. There were two other men, uh, Southwell and uh, Palmer. Unhappily, Sir Richard Southwell and Master Palmer are in Ireland on the King's affairs. But you... It has no bearing. I have their deposition here in which the court will see they state that being busy with the prisoner's books, they did not hear what was said. But if I had said that, he would instantly have called these men to witness. Do you have anything further to add, Rich? Nothing, Master Secretary. Sir Thomas? To what purpose? I'm a dead man. You have your desire of me, but it is not my actions you've hunted me for, but the thoughts of my heart. That's a long road you've opened, for first men will deny their hearts, then presently they will have no hearts. God help the people whose statesmen walk your road. And the witness may withdraw. I have one question to ask the witness. That's a chain of office you're wearing. May I see it?
The Red Dragon. What's this? Sir Richard is appointed Attorney General for Wales. For Wales? Why, Richard, it profits a man nothing to give his soul for the whole world. But for Wales? And now, I'd like to beg the court's indulgence for one moment. I have a message for the prisoner from the king. Sir Thomas, I am empowered to tell you that even now... No, we... no, it cannot be. The case rests. My lord. The jury may retire consider the evidence considering the evidence it shouldn't be necessary for them to retire is it necessary no sir you find the prisoner guilty or not guilty guilty my lord Prisoner at the bar, you have been found guilty of high treason. The sentence of the court... My lord. My lord, when I was practicing the law, the manner was to ask the prisoner before pronouncing sentence if he had anything to say. Do you have anything to say? Yes. Mm. Avoid this, I've taken every path my wits could find. Now that this court is determined to condemn me, God knoweth how. I will discharge my mind concerning my indictment and the king's title. <laughs> the indictment is founded on an act of parliament which is directly repugnant to the law of God. Parliament cannot bestow the supremacy of the church. The king cannot claim it because it is a spiritual supremacy determined by God. More to this, the immunity of the church is promised both in Magna Carta and the king's own coronation oath. Science! Now we see you are indeed malicious. Not so, Master Cromwell. I'm the king's true subject and I pray for him and all the realm. I do none harm. I say none harm. I think none harm. And if this be not enough to keep a man alive, in good faith, I long not to live. Since I came into prison, I've been several times in such a state I thought to die within the hour. And I thank God I was never sorry for this. So my poor body's at the king's pleasure. Would God my death might do him some good? Nevertheless, it is not for the supremacy that you have sought my blood, but because I would not bend to the marriage. Prisoner at the bar, you've been found guilty of high treason. The sentence of this court is that you be taken from this place to the tower and thence to the place of execution. And there your head shall be stricken from your body. And may God have mercy upon your soul. Master had easel and gall, not wine to drink. Let me be going. Father! 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 
patience. Trouble not yourself. Death comes for us all, even at our birth. Even at our birth, he only stands aside a little. And every day he looks towards us and muses whether that day or the next he will draw near. You have long known the secrets of my heart. I beseech your grace, keep back. Me up, Captain. I'll shift for myself coming down. You're not afraid of your office, friend. You send me but to God. You're very sure of that, Sir Thomas. He will not refuse one who is so blithe to go to him. Behold, the head of a traitor! I'm breathing. Are you breathing too? It's nice, isn't it? It isn't too difficult to stay alive, friends. Just keep out of trouble. Or if you must make trouble, make the sort of trouble that's expected. As the old adage says, better a live rat than a dead lion. Oh, uh, with reference to the old adage, Thomas Cromwell was found guilty of high treason and executed on the 28th of July, 1540. Norfolk was found guilty of high treason and should have been executed on the 27th of January, 1547. But on the night of the 26th of January, King Henry died of syphilis and wasn't able to sign the warrant. Thomas Cranmer, the Archbishop of Canterbury, was burned alive on the 21st of March, 1556. Oh, Richard Rich became a Knight, Solicitor General, a Baron, and Lord Chancellor of England, and died in his bed. And so did I. And so, I hope, will all of you. Well, oh, if we should bump into one another, recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> 